They are deindustrializing the country under Agenda 21. Cloward and Piven was a plan by some sociologists adopted by the Democrats back in the 60s. But it's a much older plan. The Romans and others had it where you make people dependent, you enslave them. Feudalist systems, you keep them at a subsistence level as a mode of control. It's like putting a prison out in the middle of West Texas. If you try to escape, you know, good luck. No chains are needed because there's desert for 300 miles in all direction. They actually have prisons in places like West Texas and Nevada where no chains are needed on the chain gangs because there's nowhere to go. It's 100 miles or more to any town. In some cases, 300 miles. And that's what they're doing where you don't know how to farm. You don't know how to ranch. There's no culture. The kids are taught two plus two equals five. Uh, in the Common Core and the new math, they are literally creating a group of people that can be remolded into their collectivist dream. And the big mega banks, they want a relationship like that. Now, coming up at the bottom of the hour, we'll shift gears with our guest and get his take on some of the other news issues, like neighbors call cops on man for washing car in his own driveway. That's global zoning. They got the city to pass saying you can't wash your car in your own yard. That, that's the essence of tyranny, or you can't have a lemonade stand. We're going to get William F. Jasper's take on that. Then we're going to get to this story that's on DrudgeReport.com. Pennsylvanians coerced into giving cheek swab at voluntary checkpoints, but in some cases, they don't even tell you it's voluntary. Remember up in Fort Worth a few weeks ago, it made national news, where the woman said they didn't even give her a chance. She said, you're going to give it for a DNA database, federally funded. And speaking of globalism and deindustrialization and how these trade deals work and operate, corporate socialism, General Motors says no way it'll pay back $10 billion. Well, General Motors got 20-something billion, but $10 billion from one of the payments is due. They use the money on record to move to Brazil, China, and Eastern Europe. So, so under globalism, you don't just pay $10 billion to select corporations so they can give part of it to the unions or whatever. At least that would go back into the economy but it's bad enough socialism. But at least it's like inflation where the money goes to the people. Now, under, under QE, it goes to the elite and not to the people. And it's the same thing here, where you pay to have your job moved to authoritarian China, where their wages in many areas are going down, not up. And they have cities for the rich communist. That's an oxymoron, but that's what it is. And then they have the cities for all the poor, where you live in coffin-sized apartments, have forced abortions, and are drugged with suicide nets around the Apple Foxcom factories. But that's okay because Al Gore's on the board, and it's liberal. When Obama drops bombs or backs Al-Qaeda, it's liberal. In fact, I have mainstream news articles we'll get to later where they admit, oh, U.S. getting closer to extremists. They put the extremists in in the Middle East. They've been protecting them. Now they know we know about it, so they're like, oh, maybe we'll be friends with Al-Qaeda. Now Homeland Security is for the Tea Party. Now, I wanted to get William F. Jasper, uh, senior editor at the New American Magazine, on to talk about this new partnership with Asia, just like NAFTA and GATT. They have the Atlantic Trade Partnership, but they have this Trans-Pacific Partnership that almost all of it's secret. Parts of it have been uh, released by moles via WikiLeaks. And it's exactly what we expected to see, like we saw in the Banff Canada documents that were released in 2007 that are in my film Endgame, where you have the top 100 corporations or so there, and the leaders of all the executive branches there, and a bunch of lawyers, and the governments literally take orders there, and they write it up where power is transferred to these corporate boards. And that's what globalism is is private corporations exempting themselves from the regulations, the taxes, lobbying for higher taxes on their competition, and then consolidating the economy. In fact, we'll put his article up on screen for TV viewers if you want to go check it out. They also produced a video that we linked to on Infowars.com yesterday. Uh, where William F. Jasper breaks it down. Great video, great article to send out to folks. Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP, bigger and more dangerous than Obamacare. And I agree with him. And even the Huffington Post said it's authoritarianism by Obama because it, it's, it's a total power grab on free speech, on markets, on taxes, on every front. And there's not even any news coverage except for Ron Paul talks about it. We talk about it. William F. Jasper talks about it. Drudge Report talks about it. World Net Daily talks about it. 
The libertarian constitutional media talks about it, but no one else is discussing it. Until the last few weeks, finally, we're getting some coverage because, man, I tell you, you talk about hidden in plain view and sneaking it through on us. Now, let me tell you who William F. Jasper uh, is as he joins us. He's a graduate of the University of uh, Idaho and joined the staff of the John Birch Society in 1976 as a researcher and current senior editor of The New American. And again, his parents back in the uh, 70s were, were getting into the anti-New World Order movement and, and were anti-Vietnam War. And he was like, man, that's like commie or something to kind of boil down what he said before in our interview. Then he went and researched as a smart you know, graduate student everything they were saying and found that it was true and said, well, I better join the fight against it. And so that's his story, and he's an author, filmmaker. Uh, he's the author of United Nations Exposed, Global Tyranny Step-by-Step, Step, the United Nations, the Emerging New World Order, and he joins us to break down the de facto world corporate government. First time I learned about Agenda 21 in 1992 from William F. Jasper. First time I learned about the UN and these biospheres, William F. Jasper. And so he joins us now to talk about... Am I wrong in saying, William, the mother of all globalist power grabs so far, uh, this uh, trans uh, partnership with, uh, with Asia? Well, you know, there's so many of them. Uh, when you look at the TPP, Alex, it's a subset of the World Trade Organization. So I guess you could say that the World Trade Organization is the mother. Is Self is, is the mother, and of course, it is is really a progeny of the United Nations. So the United Nations ends up be, really being the the mother of all power grabs and all of these things. The IMF, the World Bank, the World Trade Organization flow from it. But the TPP, the Trans Pacific Partnership, which, as you pointed out, Americans are just learning about now. We've been writing about it and talking about it for the last couple of years. But it has now reached the point where President Obama, in his State of the Union address earlier this year, said that he wanted it passed by the end of the year. And that's what they were pushing for. So we've had a victory of sorts in that it looks like they're not going to be able to even sneak it through uh, during a Christmas sneak attack, which is when many uh, really sure. bad pieces of legislation have gone through. However, they may try by the end of the year to push through trade promotion authority. And uh, people who remember the NAFTA fight, the CAFTA fight, uh, all of the other, uh, the SPP, uh, Security Prosperity Party. Fast track. Right. It, that's the fast track. They want to have it pushed through Congress without debate, without any uh, amendments, without any kind of conditions. And that's how a lot of the congressmen who are really trying to be weaselly on this will say, well, I voted for the fast track, but I voted. I, I'm against the uh, uh, against the uh, uh, trade agreement. Well, if they push through the fast track, it almost then becomes a sure thing that it's going to be eventually uh, passed. That's right. And when I say the mother of all, obviously David Rockefeller and people are, and Cecil Rhodes are the mother of it all. But when I see what's in these documents, and, and that's only one part of the larger plan, it, 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 it's, it's the biggest grab I've seen and, and the biggest transfer directly to private corporate interest uh, towards corporate global government. Right. This is uh, this is an incredible uh, grab for power, an unconstitutional transfer of power. If the, if we allow this to go through, uh, of international and international multinational corporate uh, takeover of government functions, legislative, executive, and judicial at the federal, state, and local levels. And it, let me tell you, it, it will affect all of those as we are seeing these previous trade agreements, NAFTA, CAFTA, dozens of these agreements that have gone through. Uh, in one of my, I did a series of video commentaries, you referred to one of them there, which are going to be uh, coming out on the TPP all week and uh, next week, uh, breaking down different parts of them. But uh, you'll recall that when we were fighting NAFTA, here it is almost 30 years ago, uh, uh, they, they, we were saying, hey, this is going to be a transfer of power. It's an attack on our sovereignty. We are going to be having international uh, legal tribunals, courts, deciding on American law, on state law, on our national law, on our local laws. And 
we were laughed at. We were scorned. All of the the people, Republicans and Democrats. This is a bipartisan treason. Al Gore made all his jokes. The Bushes made jokes. It was all very funny. Oh, this is all about prosperity. This is about trade, about opening up new jobs, etc. It has nothing to do with anything that's going to sacrifice any of our sovereignty. Ten years later, uh, in 1992, uh, when the, or excuse me, uh, ten, ten years after after it passed, uh, then we had cases brought against American companies, uh, and uh, they were being decided by NAFTA courts. In fact, NAFTA courts were overriding American courts. That's right. And now we're going to break. And now look at how we've been deindustrialized. Because the globalists could just put regulations on us that China wasn't following and then transfer the jobs. William F. Jasper is our guest. We're going to come back to him. And I haven't gotten to the big issue yet. The big enchilada in this whole deal is, remember, this agreement's been negotiated for years. It's totally secret. And Obama will not release it to anybody what's in it. So understand that. It's not just a power grab. We don't get to know about it. So we're going to get William F. Jasper, the expert on this. To break it down, we'll also tell you how to go to the New American Magazine online and get it and how to subscribe. You should subscribe to the New American Invaluable Magazine. You should subscribe to InfoWars Magazine as well. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other members of the fluorine family that are added to Western water supplies are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the people that drink it. So the question is, why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple, dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We developed Fluoride Shield to be the highest quality, highest standards because I use it every day and my family uses it every single day. Let's take a closer look at the ingredients that make up this special proprietary formula. Tamarind has been celebrated for its ability to immobilize toxic fluoride residues, while zeolites have a long history of attracting and holding toxic compounds. Enter fulvic acid, an excellent cleansing agent. Then we added the highest quality shilajit, a rare compound that is collected from the high mountains of the Himalayas. We topped it all off with the powerhouse herb cilantro that is intended to mobilize fluoride and other dangerous compounds for removal from the body. And the final touch to energize this formula is our proprietary nascent iodine. And as always, consult your physician as well because that is important. And finally, Fluoride Shield, Survival Shield, and all the products at InfoWarsLife.com grew out of my quest to try to find the very best compounds from God's cornucopia to protect myself and my family. And from our research, I believe we are bringing you the best, highest quality products. And you have that commitment from Alex Jones and the entire InfoWars crew. TheNewAmerican.com is where you can read a lot of the great online articles and see the videos that Jasper and others are putting out. And it's so essential to buy, you can buy them in bulk at cost, hard copy magazines that you can hand out to people to wake them up. People really pay attention to print now because print is so rare. I don't know how long they've been publishing their magazine, 25 years or something, it's got to be. Uh, but the group's been around more than 60 years. The point is, is that... We put out InfoWars magazine with new original articles, but a boil down and digest of the news that, you know, happens right as we go to print to, to educate people. And so you can buy them at cost at InfoWarsStore.com. And we still got some of the December issue left to hand out to friends and family. Big color, glossy magazine, factoids, images. Buying somebody a book about the New World Order, they may not read it. But you buy our magazines for like a dollar and a half a piece at cost. You hand them out to folks or give a gift subscription. The shipping's included in the price. We've got a discount running right now. And somebody will get 12 of these mailed to their doors. What about the police department, the fire department, the military base, uh, the local library? Give a gift subscription to the New American Magazine. They're not a sponsor. They probably should be. But give a gift subscription to the New American Magazine. Very well done. Give a gift subscription to InfoWars Magazine. Now, William F. Jasper, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. But I wanted to, you know... 
get into this with you. It's the secretness of it. It's not just the power transfer. Talk about that. I mean, we had to get WikiLeaks to leak just one little part of the agreement, and it was a draconian power grab, the likes of which I've never seen. Well, Alex, this is the, the most disturbing and should be the most infuriating part of the whole process that we see going on here with the TPP. It's a replay of what we've seen at, at past uh, uh, trade agreements. Uh, but, it, but this has been even worse. The secrecy from our transparent president, remember, he promised over and over again, we were gonna, this was going to be the administration of transparency. This has been conducted in total secrecy. Even your elected representatives, the American people forget that. They're not going to release the text. This has been going on for a couple of years. They have these negotiation meetings going on with hundreds of representatives of corporate America and foreign corporations, big labor unions, NGOs, the big uh, Sierra Club, Na uh, Natural Resources Defense Council, all of the big approved uh, uh, representatives. So these are the NGOs who are going to go along with all of this. And uh, so they are, are given the text. Uh, consider this. Senators and congressmen, people we elect to represent us, have requested copies of the text. And they're told, uh, no, uh, you and your staff cannot look at them. However, if you are, you cannot have them. However, we'll let you come over here and look at them, but you can't take any notes or can't make any copies. However, representatives of corporations and labor unions, they're given a secure website and a passcode. They can come, log on and go through the, the documents at any time. This is outrageous. It shouldn't be tolerated here in our country. And when, you, when your congressman says, yes, he's very upset about this, well, then ask him, what are you doing about this? Uh, it's, it's one thing for them just to give lip service and and issue uh, utterances that kind of give them cover so that they can show the folks back, back home that they're doing something about it. Uh, but there really aren't if they don't force this out into the open. Uh, they need to subpoena those things. Uh, are, here's, here's where the, the real breakdown is, and this is with the, uh, the media. And of course, this is no surprise to you, Alex, but we're seeing the same thing here that we did during NAFTA, CAFTA, and all the WTO uh, battle, all of these things. The major uh, media have jumped on board with this. They'll offer some occasional criticism of the process or of the actual product, but overall they give over complete support to it and or they just simply cover it up. They don't report on it. And this is true with most of the so-called conservative talk radio. Uh, if they're not outright in support of the uh, so-called trade agreements, uh, they simply ignore it and allow it to pass unopposed. So uh, right now, uh, we can get into some of the actual details that they're not telling us about. Uh, one of the things that came out, you mentioned the WikiLeaks. So here we have to rely on a whistleblower releasing something, some of the text to WikiLeaks to find out about it. None of our congressmen or senators have gotten anything, and none of them have been uh, gutsy enough to uh, subpoena uh, and go to war over this. With Imagine wanting to know about policy and a foreign group deciding our law. Let's stay there and come back with that and then tie it in to this web, this spider's web. What's at the center of the New World Order web with NAFTA and GATT and the World Trade Organization, the IMF, the World Bank, the UN, the Bank of England, the Federal Reserve, and what is their ultimate endgame goal? How do we stop them? With William F. Jasper, I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com is the real media. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infowars.com, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> My judge, what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> Infoworth.com. <laughs> and I want to get William F. Jasper's take on the waterfront, other things that are happening, where the state of the battle is and things briefly. But remember, things like the New American Magazine, things like Campaign for Liberty, things like Infowars are supported by viewers like you. We're all about free will, free association. We're not like MSNBC, whose parent company got billions in bailouts and hundreds of millions in stimulus money directly to give Rachel Maddow a pay increase.
We're not like NPR in some years getting 400 plus million, sometimes more of taxpayer money, sometimes as low as 200 million. And then we're still running around begging for money all day when it's literally written, underwritten by David Rockefeller. Pushing anti-family, anti-liberty, anti-self-defense. These people are enemies. They're not well-meaning liberals. They're authoritarian dirtbags. And the Republican leadership is bought off by them. That's why we got George P. Bush saying he's a Tea Partier now. They want to absorb the Tea Party that comes out of the JBS and the New American and Ron Paul and then Alex Jones and everybody else after that. We're not radicals. They say we're radicals all day. They're the radicals usurping our republic. We sound crazy because we're covering their crazy authoritarian agenda. If I told you all the stuff I've read in history books about how weird Hitler was, I'd sound crazy. But I'm not Hitler. I'm telling you about Hitler. If I told you all the crazy stuff about Nero, I'd sound crazy. But I'm not Nero. I'm telling you what Nero did. Marrying his horse, everything else. These power-mad nuts must be stopped. Now... If you order by the 19th, we can guarantee, whether it's, it's, it's the high-quality products at InfoWarsLife.com, the Chiapas high-quality coffee, totally organic, my favorite blend, now brought to you, and the old free market way to fund our operation, the InfoWars high-def dash cams, the lowest price you'll find anywhere on the same dash cam. We bought them in bulk and offer it at the lowest listed retail price anywhere to document what's happening with the police, bureaucrats, wildlife, you name it. That's an InfoWarsStore.com. And also, at InfoWarsStore.com, we have Behind the Green Mask, You and Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey, who used to be a mainline liberal and found out it was all true. She was in state government, in zoning. And this is the best little booklet, I think, to wake people up. It's available at InfoWarsStore.com. And then Tragedy and Hope, that's, I don't know, 1,100 pages or so, that I see on William F. Jasper's uh, bookshelf on Skype, if you're watching us on TV, where the Georgetown political science professor, Bill Clinton's mentor, who he thanked in a State of the Union, admits they control liberalism, cons fake conservatism, fascism, and the trilateral commission and all of it is meant to bring in world corporate government. And that it's only meant to look like there's the illusion of choice in politics. I'm paraphrasing quotes. This book, and I've actually read almost the whole thing. When I say that, I probably read 800 pages of it over the years because, I mean, I skip over some of the more little factoid inside baseball stuff. But I've read Cecil Rhodes' writings. I mean, I've read H.G. Wells' writings from them. The White House science czar, talking about putting stuff in the water to sterilize you, written in 74. Um, that's John P. Holdren's Eco Science. I mean, uh, I've got that over there on the bookshelf. I mean, I know what they've really said, okay? This isn't a game. So I wanted William F. Jasper to get into... What's in the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP, how we beat it, and then how it nexuses in to Agenda 21 and all the things that are happening right now. And so, so please segue into what's at the center of the spider web, how things are going. I mean, I know that's a whole waterfront. I'll remind you of the questions, but more on TPP. How do we beat that battle? How does that web tie back to the center? What's at the center? What's the end game? How's the fight going? William F. Jasper. Well, uh, Alex, first of all, uh, the TPP, uh, we have to realize, as bad as it is, is just a stepping stone. And we have that in that, uh, in that same phrase, stepping stone, transition, uh, by one of the architects of it, C. Fred Bergsten. C. Fred Bergsten is one of the big men in the Council on Foreign Relations who is the uh, chief brain in the brain trust known as the Peterson Institute for International Economics. And he said in an essay, which I quote in a couple of my articles, that the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which now includes 12 countries, we can run through the list of the countries if you want, uh, but uh, it is just a stepping to stone to the FTAAP, the Free Trade Area of the Asia Pacific, which will include dozens of countries all ar around the Pacific Rim. Uh, so, uh, again, it's important to, to remember that even what we have learned is bad and as uh, frightening as it is and as it should be to, to Americans who treasure freedom. Uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg. It is a process. They intend for it to keep evolving. And uh, if you read uh, the literature regularly of the Peterson Institute, of the Council on Foreign Relations, the Brookings Institution, uh, you see that they are uh, 
uh, plan on having this continually evolve with increasing structures of governance. Governance is a big is a big thing for them. Global governance, and uh, that is just kind of a, a euphemistic way of saying global government, world government. And they uh, they uh, say this quite openly in some of their publications. But uh, so they're talking about transferring economic power and global political power. Uh, legislative, executive, and judicial to global institutions, eventually all to the United Nations. The World Trade Organization plays a very important transition role in all of this, overseeing trade. But as we've pointed out, and as you were hinting at there, the this so-called trade agreement uh, deals, as the U.S. Trade Representative Office even admits on its website, only deals about 20 percent of the whole agreement deals with trade issues. Uh, so if it's a trade agreement, what are all the other issues that it's uh, that it's dealing dealing with? Well, it goes on uh, on their website, uh, says that it's uh, deals with I'll just read you some of the things there. It deals with customs, it deals with intellectual trade, it deals with uh, taxation. Uh, it goes through a whole a whole list of uh, things that they deal with, virtually everything that is outside of trade in that state, local, and, and federal laws. It is governance with NATO as the U.N. Army. So what's at the center of the spider, and what is their end game if they get planetary rule? Well, uh, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And when you have people who are already absolutely corrupt and they get absolute power, you know the the... The uh, uh, end game is is really absolute corruption, and as uh, Professor R. J. Rummel said in his death by government, is that po power uh, corrupts and uh, uh, po and uh, power kills. So once you have a total uh, control in government, in this case a world government, we could e expect nothing else except for tyranny on a global scale. And with that, genocide, which we've always seen whenever you have total absolute government on a global scale. And so this is a very dangerous thing. Uh, people will think uh, we're exaggerating when we say that, but uh, look, our founding fathers recognize that they said jar guard with uh, jealous uh, uh, with jealousy the the public uh, uh, safety and the public uh, liberty so we're supposed to be jealous about these things we're supposed to be prudent and recognize whenever government is taking steps to expand its power that uh, we better slam it back down uh, if we're going to remain the masters instead of the slaves or the servants so uh, this is a very dangerous thing and whenever they operate in secrecy they do not want us to know what they're doing that is what you call a clue that this is not something that is going to be uh, sure sure i mean you guys are trailblazers who pointed out the vietnam war was meant to create artificial dissension bankrupt the country you guys got attacked by the left and the right and demonized uh, you know, when your parents were part of the John Burt Society because you were so effective and so on target. And I've noticed the John Burt Society since then has been ultra conservative about the info you cover. And I'm not criticizing you, you're trailblazers, but now you guys are always on the cutting edge of exposing the new attack, but, but very calmly, very focused, but at the same time, you know, almost, almost not even hammering it as bad as it is because the system came after you back when they had media superiority and dominance. They don't have media superiority and dominance anymore. They're losing it. And I wanted to ask you, where do you think the world is today? Because here's an example. It's on DrudgeReport.com. He's coming up in about 20 minutes. Clayman, the man who took on Obama and won with the NSA. Stunning revelations. Dirty tricks. NSA sent out emails that he never wrote. Guys, will you print me that? This is the kind of stuff they do to me. I get calls, and then we track it back to government sources and corporate. People send out threatening emails, faxes, attacks, say things I never said, edit what I say, lie about what I say. Uh, but the thing is, it doesn't work anymore. When they would attack me like this 10 years ago, it, it would hurt me. Now, even the unintellectual and uninformed go, wait, if the system is attacking you, you must be good. So what I'm saying is, like I told Politico a few years ago, I said, if you want to hurt Rand Paul, start agreeing with him and endorsing him. That will destroy him because people aren't sophisticated enough that have just woken up. They're awake, but not to exactly what's happening.
It's kind of like you wake up, you're half asleep, you're figuring out what's going on. I said, the only way to destroy us would be to endorse us, but you don't do that because you're so arrogant. And so what I'm saying here is you guys were right. You were right about it all. And uh, then you're almost, not you, but some other folks, almost apologetic when you break down the diabolic nature of this when you guys were always aware of it. So, so what is the state of the world uh, and, 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 and what is the center of this? And you said corrupts absolutely. Well, sure, it's forced world population reduction, but where do you, you know, fighting these guys for several decades and, and standing on the shoulders of folks that have been fighting it, you know, really the first to analyze the enemy attack profile along with uh, Cleon Skousen and others, what really, William F. Jasper, is the editor of that magazine, what do you really think about the fight? What do you really think is at the bottom of the rat hole? Well, uh, in uh, reference to uh, the TPP, it's very clear that uh, one of the things that came out in the WikiLeaks thing is that they're trying to shut down all independent media, such as yourself, such as, such as our thing, by implementing SOPA and ACTA. Uh, under different names, SOPA, the Stop uh, Online Piracy Act, Act of the uh, whatever one uh, that was. Uh, the, both of those were aimed at uh, legisl. They, they, these were legislation in Congress to shut down the internet and to shut down independent uh, media. And uh, thanks to an outpouring of uh, citizen effort, that legislation. And others like it was defeated in in uh, Congress. And then Aaron Schwartz got hung. Right. And so now they're trying to implement it in this trade agreement, sneaking it in. And that's just one example of many of the different uh, things that they're going to try to push through here. And they are going to have, unfortunately, at this point, lots of liberal Democrats and so-called conservative Republicans hopping on board because, as they've done in the past, they've been able to uh, convince enough people that, hey, this is good for trade, it's going to be good for our economy, uh, they're going to have a harder time doing it this time. You know, and that's a good point, though. They couldn't get it done at the national level, so they just go to this secret global level. Congress can't see it. I mean, this is espionage. This is a foreign takeover. Instead of just criticizing it, I think we start talking about treason trials. Well, it, it, it is uh, getting to that point. I mean, it is, uh, here, here they are. Uh, uh, dis dismantling our constitutional system. Now, uh, before we went to the break, I was going to go to a, a point that's really important about the uh, judicial uh, fiat that they're trying to give to the WTO and to the regional uh, globalist uh, courts. Uh, back when when uh, NAFTA was passed, and we we said this was an attack on sovereignty, um, you know, we were ridiculed, as I said. However, then after uh, the, the lawsuits came down and the courts started ruling against us, very interesting. Secretary of State, our current Secretary of State, John Kerry, was then a senator from Massachusetts. And he started getting uh, uh, pummeled by uh, constituents saying, hey, what's going on with this? this? This court is overruling our Massachusetts state court. And here's what he said. He said, well, back when we debated NAFTA, nobody was saying anything about Chapter 13. That was the chapter that dealt with, um, uh, with uh, these regional tribunals. He said, nobody talked about that. Nobody said anything about the possibility of of uh, losing our our sovereignty. Well, that was a lie. He, we had said that a lot of things about it. We'd written about that constantly. We'd peppered him with that. So, well, Ross Perot did that too. He said, "Listen, you're going to have foreign bodies, foreign tribunals railing on American trade deals." And uh, Representative Abner Mikva said the same thing. He said, "If we had known uh, back when NAFTA was being debated that something like this could happen." Nobody in Congress would have voted for it. Well, again, this is after the fact trying to cover themselves. They knew. Uh, they had been apprised of this. It was actually in the writing. They could tell. We, we pointed it out. It's in Chapter 13. Read it. Now, all of a sudden, they pretend like, well, gee, we never saw exactly. that. Exactly. So now they just keep it secret, the next phase of it. But I don't know how even if they ram this through and have people sign on to it at the executive level, well, that's my next issue. What do you make of Obama? And I know he's a puppet, but he's setting the precedent. 
he really, for all intents and purposes, on open borders, on legalizing people, on military, putting NATO over our military, uh, over uh, selectively enforcing 30-plus areas of Obamacare, on so many fronts on guns, he's acting as a dictator and saying that. What do we do about that? Because now the precedent's being set for the executive to be dictatorial. Well, unfortunately, uh, Obama's uh, push in all of these areas and all of his very frightening executive orders. I mean, anytime the president issues executive orders, and this was one of the first things when I first came into the movement uh, I had never heard about before was really executive orders. And I didn't realize the whole unconstitutional nature of uh, the executive branch issuing executive orders like they've been doing for decades now. Uh, President Obama has has uh, taken this to a whole new level and unfortunately a very dangerous level. But he could not have ac accomplished what he has done. Nobody would have stood for all of his executive orders that he's issued so far if, if he had already not had the ground laid for him by Exactly. They've laid the foundation. Now he's building the house and now whoever moves in after him is going to be even worse. I and, mean, this is... Mm -hmm. And here's the problem that we have is that too many Republicans say nothing and object uh, very little, if at all, when a President Bush uh, issues, a Republican issues these executive orders, similar executive orders. And then they, they go all crazy when o Obama does. The Democrats do the same thing. Uh, those who were just apoplectic over uh, George Bush's executive orders have been very that's right that's right it's total partisan gangster politics instead of being principled and, and living in reality but i think that's starting to change final segment with william f jasper straight ahead then the man who just won in court against the nsa larry clayman now you can watch alex jones live at infowars.com forward slash show you'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for prison planet tv you can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show.